Have you ever seen that magic trick where the magician impales their assistant with a sword? Like, they just shove the sword straight through them until it comes out the other side. Crazy, right? Well, I hate to break it to you, but magic isn't real, like professional wrestling or love. Now, before you get mad... Actually, you can get mad, I don't really care. I'm not dismissing these things. Actually, I think they're much more impressive knowing there's some trickery involved. If you are actually magic, you're just magic, you know? It's like being born with different colored eyes. I mean, congrats, I guess, but think of the most amazing magic trick you ever saw. If that performer were actually magic, I mean, it's not really a big deal for them, is it? Really, it's a bit of a joke. If they actually have these powers and all they use them for is to amuse people, that's just wasteful and gratuitous. Vulgar, even. But if it isn't real, but you can't see how it possibly couldn't be, well, that's the real feat, isn't it? Think of the cunning and ingenuity it took to engineer this trick, this deception. The impaled magician's assistant wears a special belt under their clothes that features a hollowed tube that wraps around their body. The sword is actually very bendy and is fed into a slot at the front of this tube, bends around the performer's body and out a slot at the back. Neat, huh? Or does the fact that it's a trick ruin it for you? Well, how about this guy? He's not wearing a belt. Well, he is, I suppose, but not for the sword. How does he do it? Arnold Garrett Hensks was born in Rotterdam in the Netherlands in 1912. An artist by trade, Hensks was attracted to mysticism from an early age, claiming to have paranormal experiences and dreams. I personally wouldn't have paid too much mind to that. I often have dreams where I'm very wealthy, but I can't stop eating my most prized possessions, which is sad and deeply troubling for me, but, you know, it is just a dream. By his thirties, Hensks decided to leave his job and fully embrace his unusual side, calling himself Mirin Dejo. He claimed he was invulnerable to injury and proved this by piercing his body with daggers and generally doing things you might expect to see at a freak show. Dejo claimed this ability was a gift from some higher being, and he wanted to use this power to spread a message of peace and love, believing people to be too materialistic. With this in mind, he began a performance with an assistant. During the course of these performances, the assistant would impale Dejo with things like swords, passing the object through his naked torso and out the other side. They sometimes used hollow rods, through which they would pour water. In these performances, Dejo would not bleed, nor would he show any signs of pain, even running around while he was impaled. There's footage of him being impaled too, but it's actually a bit more graphic than you'd expect. A photograph of a man sitting nonchalant with an object pierced through him is one thing, but believe me, seeing the assistant shoving a point into him until the skin on the other side stretches out like a tent before being punctured is a bit much. The footage is out there if you're curious, but it's just a little too too wince inducing for me to put in a video. Sorry, you sick freak. I was not alone in feeling slightly uncomfortable seeing this, and audiences were often made feel ill watching the spectacle. Normally I'd ask, what the fuck did you expect going to see a man known as the human pincushion, but honestly, I think it is genuinely worse to watch than you'd think it was. It's really not like someone swallowing a sword or hammering nails up their nose. So it was a unique act, but there had to be a catch, right? Some clever trick or smoke and mirrors ruse? Well... Mirin Dejo had his act examined by medical professionals. X-rays revealed that the sword was really piercing his skin and was really going through his body. The scientists began to feel the same nausea the crowds had. This guy was a legitimate freak, but how the hell was he doing it? They determined that first of all, the sword had to be clean, of course, or it would lead to infection. It also had to have a fine point, allowing it to neatly make its way through the body with a clean puncture and no tearing. This had to be done with great care and was the reason Dejo always performed with a single trusted assistant. Certain organs like the liver could withstand a pinpoint puncture if this was done correctly, and the professionals noticed there was no internal bleeding after the sword was removed. So how was there no bleeding and no pain? 
Well, this is the trick of the performance, although even this is real. Mirin Dejo was not the first to perform this sort of act. It had long been practiced beforehand in Eastern mysticism. Someone had first performed the act on Dejo. He would have been hypnotized and put into a trance. This would have eased the pain of the puncture. He would have bled a lot but been treated. After his recovery, he was left with an insensitive path of scar tissue through his torso, through which he could repeat the piercing without great difficulty. Although I'm sure you still need to be a bit touched in the head to do this stuff. And sure enough, in 1948, Dejo claimed voices told him to ingest a steel needle. And so he did. He was under the belief that the voices were from his guardian angels who would protect him from the damage wrought by eating a needle, just as they had protected him from all his other acts. He died of aortic rupture a few days later. And there you have it kids, don't eat needles no matter what the voices tell you. Wait, what's that? You're hearing the voices right now? Listen. Cuxer now has membership. You must buy a membership. Buy a membership. Well, I don't know what to tell you about the voices in your head, but I would prefer if they didn't interrupt me again. That's because I was just about to tell you about my new channel memberships. That's right, you can buy a membership for my channel and receive custom emojis and badges beside your name when you comment. That shows me and everyone else that your opinion is a little less worthless than everyone else's. The higher membership tiers will give you access to my community posts on the status of the channel, you know, announcements, or maybe I'll let you know if I'm taking a break or a video got delayed or whatever. I would put these public so everyone can see them, but well, it's annoying and probably only the most dedicated fans want to see these anyways. So please consider supporting the channel by paying for a membership. As always, thank you and goodbye.